good morning everyone let's continue our epidemiology session so today we'll be seeing the descriptive epidemiology so i was talking about epidemiological basic study designs that is observational and experimental so in observational we had descriptive and analytical epidemiology so today we'll be seeing in detail about descriptive epidemiology so descriptive epidemiology we had seen many study design uh, one was uh, case report case series longitudinal study and cross-sectional studies so how to conduct a descriptive epidemiological study so this is a very common study which uh, everyone can easily perform and it is a very first step of any type of study this is just a collecting data collecting data of any group of people regarding any particular disease or anything so that is all about descriptive epidemiology in short <coughs> so we can say that this is a first phase of epidemiological study so we will be observing the distribution of disease how it is distributed among the people and what are the characteristics of the disease associated so these are the common things which we will be doing in descriptive epidemiology So all these things you can see the example of a descriptive data this is number of death per person uh, in by 1 lakh people 1 lakh uh, live birth so you can see that uh, the death is uh, going on decreasing as the time uh, goes forward so this is 1936 and uh, this is 1975 so the uh, number of death uh, is decreasing over a period of this is sorry not 1975 this is 1750 to 1975 so this is a data of the child death okay, in among uh, one lakh uh, live births so this is an example of descriptive data similarly the death rates of heart disease over in six countries okay so these are the death rates which is showing in this dotted uh, line graphs so these are the uh, a death rate in the y-axis and the year in x-axis so it is uh, just giving a data of death rate in various uh, countries during this period 1950 to 2010 so what are the basic steps in descriptive epidemiology these are the fundamental steps so the first is defining the population so suppose we have a problem in front so we are going to conduct a study in a population so we need to define the population okay so the second one is defining the disease under study and the third one is describing the disease by using time person and place the fourth step is measuring the disease and the fifth step is comparing with non indices and finally the ultimate aim of descriptive study is to formulate hypothesis so we'll come in detail by each step the first one is defining the population so we go to a population which includes lot of people various gender various socioeconomic status various occupation various classes so we need to define our population to be studied suppose the same example we do we take yesterday we have taken an example of cholera so we need to constrict our population to a group of people who might have had consumed water the suspected water because water consumption might have caused this cholera disease so on a particular period of time people who have had consumed water from a particular hotel or a particular common tap must be our population we cannot just take the entire population because the population will be very huge so we need to constrict and we need to clearly define our population where we are going to conduct our study so that is uh, our population defining otherwise the the study which we are planning to conduct will be very difficult 
because the population will be too huge it will take up majority of our time expenditure and we will end up with nothing so if in order to get a good result we need to define our population exactly which group of people we want to conduct the study so you can take the example as cholera disease people who have consumed water suspected water from the particular source should be your population so the next is so suppose you can take an example example the same example you can take this this could be the total population in that town or society wherever it is so the target population will be too huge okay so you cannot include all the people in that population you have to take a small sample of the population when we define our population the population will be little more little more big still it would be as big as the study is not possible so we need to take a sample from the population so this will be our target population people who have had consumed water from the suspected source so we may not be able to take entire the target population target population is the total population who might have had drank that particular water from that particular source there will be many people there will be thousands of people so we cannot take the entire population so what we do is we take a sample out of it it should be representative so the second step is the first step was defining the population the second step is defining the disease under study okay so population already defined so next thing is uh, to oh, uh, to define the disease under study so the cholera disease or any disease which need to be clearly defined so what happens is we need to keep an operational definition okay not the exact definition we need to keep an operational definition I can give you an example tonsillitis is a disease okay so our operational definition will be see the normal definition is like inflammation of the tonsils caused by infection usually with streptococcus pyogenes but we'll convert it into the presence of large red tonsils with white exudate which on trot sap culture that has predominantly streptococcus pyogenes so our operational definition is this so our cases will be only persons which follows or which actually have this operational definition rather than our this definition so this is a WHO definition or a clinical definition so we will convert the clinical definition into operational definition and we follow the operational definition for all the patients only the patients which has operational definition criteria will be considered as case otherwise they will not be considered as case why we are doing this operational definition is to restrict the people restrict the entry of people otherwise we might get a lot of people which will be very difficult to incorporate into the study because epidemiological study is always limited to a smaller sample size because larger studies are not possible because of many factors so we need to uh, control our population size but at the same time we need to make sure that the population is representative and the sample should represent of that population so that's why we are uh, defining our population and we are defining our study so that the population size can be restricted without losing the quality of population so the sample will be having the sample will be having the same properties of the population it is supposed to have the same properties of population so those two steps of one is the defining our population and the second one is defining the disease so operational definition we keep in cholera it will be a different uh, operational definition i have just kept this tonsillitis for your easy understanding so once we defined our study it is easy to categorize the 
patients as deceased or non deceased if we keep clinical definition we may get a lot of patients some of them are might not be useful for our objective or our particular study so operational definition is always important in any epidemiological study that is descriptive study the next part is the most crucial part of our descriptive study that is the describing the disease we need to describe the disease under three headings that is time place that is time place and person so we need to describe the disease so if we say it is time we commonly ask these three questions that is time distribution when is the disease occurring so if we go to the cholera example we ask the people when was it happened when is it occurring and where is it occurring and who is getting the disease these three things we need to find out the time place and persons when where and who these three are the most important thing in descriptive study so time distribution we may uh, go into detail so we need to find out how the usually diseases are getting uh, getting classified under short term fluctuation period fluctuation long term or secular trends be the diseases are uh, very different in its uh, output how they present how they show symptoms in people are very different so patterns of disease are different so time distribution we know short term fluctuation if it is an epidemic it will come suddenly uh, a, a lot of a lot of uh, cases appear overnight in a 2 3 days of period and it will go just like that so that is epidemic occurrence of uh, occurrence of and more number of cases that is excess number of cases that is epidemic but this is very short term fluctuation we know common cold influenza which are, uh, short term fluctuation which is having a very shorter duration so uh, types of one, one will go through a little bit about the short term fluctuation or the epidemics that is common source epidemic Uh, and the propagated epidemic we you know person to person the corona is uh, spreading from person to person from other port from annual is over if it is based on the source point source where a single um, person is uh, sp spreading the disease or continuous or multiple exposure or slow epidemic this is just a sub part of this uh, class that is types of epidemics so under short term fluctuation or under time distribution we were seeing short term fluctuation and in short term fluctuation it is commonly epidemic and we are seeing just examples of some of the epidemics epidemics can be classified as common cause uh, common source propagated and slow epidemics okay we will not go into much detail point source means a single person is uh, giving a lot of disease or a point source is giving uh, a lot of cases that is bhopal case tragedy or a food poisoning common source uh, common source is a uh, well of contaminated water or a prostitute infected with gonorrhea uh, so this is a common source which spreads uh, repeated exposure but before i was talking about uh, single exposure so single exposure is a single place or a single uh, single uh, locality which is spreading a lot of diseases not a single person so it is like food poisoning and bhopal gas tragedy and here it comes uh, common source that there we have a prostitute infected with gonorrhea or a well of contaminated water where a single source or a common source is spreading disease and propagated epidemics with seasonal trends and cyclic trends so seasonal trend is we know measles uh, usually occurs in early spring and respiratory disease which we commonly see in winter and git uh, which commonly seen in summer this is a seasonal trend okay whereas in cyclic trend we know uh, before the vaccination era 
Measles used to happen every 2 to 3 years, rubella every 6 to 9 years and influenza every 7 to 10 years. After the vaccination period, these all are not very common. So automobile accidents are more frequent on weekends, that is Saturdays and Sundays. It is a cyclic trend. Before we study seasonal trend, that is uh, upper respiratory tract which is common in winter and measles in early spring. And long term or secular trend is like common heart disease or lung cancer, diabetes which is very common in developed countries but now uh, our India and other developing countries are also becoming uh, cases are increasing but usually uh, it happens over a very longer period so secular trends or long term trends it is like commonly uh, seen this type of diseases in the western uh, countries and now it is slowly slowly changing and uh, a big shift will happen in a very longer period of time so what we have seen is epidemics okay uh, the type of epidemics it was under time distribution short term fluctuation and epidemics the types of epidemics like common source propagated and slow epidemic under common source the Bhopal gas tragedy and food poisoning and uh, continuous or repeated exposure that is uh, prostitute of uh, gonorrhea and well of contaminated water and propagated epidemics and periodic fluctuation okay so before we were seeing short term fluctuation now we are seeing periodic fluctuation just little bit uh, messy uh, it comes in between the descriptive epidemiology but anyway epidemic is a commonly asked question so you need to know in detail about epidemic So seasonal trends, periodic fluctuation, we have seasonal trend and cyclic trend. Seasonal trend, we talked about uh, measles and uh, respiratory diseases, cyclic trends, pre-vaccination and vaccination era, and uh, automobile accidents. Long-term trends, the cancer we've seen in the developed countries. So we have covered the time distribution, now the place. Okay, so place we need to find out uh, where all it is happened the disease how it is distributed in a geographical area so what we need to uh, find out if it is a big disease or if it is a uh, pandemic or a disease which happened in a town state or a district or a country we need to find out the local distribution the urban rural differences national and international variations okay so international variations we were, s we were saying that cancer which is very common in cancer of stomach which is common in japan not in us so the oral cancers are common in india compared to western countries so these are a place distribution international variation So national variations we know some areas are endemic uh, diseases which is like fluorosis, goiter, malaria, nutrition deficiency which are very prevalent in certain parts of our country. This is not very prevalent all over the country but it is some parts of the country. Malaria, fluorosis, endemic fluorosis area in Kerala which is in Alapi and Palakkad. So rural urban variations. Certain diseases are very common in rural sector like periodontal disease and certain diseases uh, like dental caries is common in urban setup. And the diseases like bronchitis, accidents, lung cancer, cardiovascular which is common in urban than the rural but whereas the zoonotic and skin diseases which are common in rural setup. So there will be variations uh, for the disease according to the place rural urban uh, the national variation international variations and local distributions local distribution how the disease is locally distributed so this is one of the famous example how the epidemiology has come into existence it is uh, done by john snow he is known as father of epidemiology so this was a case in cholera so this pump a was spreading the disease so after 
He did a sport map. He found out that the many casualties are around the pump A. So in local distribution, we can do a sport map and sport the casualties or the cases happened. So you will get to know that uh, it might be concentrated uh, around uh, some point that might be the point which caused the disease so in this case it was a london uh, happened in uh, 1840s in london uh, broad street church a pump was there which is just contaminated broad street uh, which was contaminated with uh, sewage supply and it was uh, producing lot of cholera patients so he accidentally found out that the pump was uh, pump was the reason and later the pump was changed and the disease abruptly stopped so this was an invention or this was a discovery by the great epidemiologist john snow and that's why he's known as father of epidemiology so this is a sport map this looks like a town map where these black dots are the casualties due to that particular disease so if we do a sport map in a very small area will get to know the uh, will get to know a better picture of the disease so this was all about place so we have seen time and place the next one is person distribution so how widely it is distributed within uh, different accordingly uh, like age sex occupation marital status habits and social class so we collect uh, data from persons and we categorize into age, gender, occupation, marital status. So we can easily understand uh, in which age group, in which gender, which social class, which marital class it is uh, distributed. So usually measles happen in childhood, cancer in middle age and atherosclerosis in old age. So these are the few diseases which is very prevalent in certain age groups. And gender few diseases are prevalent in males and few are in females and in occupation related diseases workers in coal mines usually have silicosis these all are examples when we do a study we need to find out where it is actually uh, prevalent these are examples which I was talking about and social class uh, few diseases are very common in upper class few are very common in rural class I mean not rural areas that is a low socioeconomic background we have reached the fourth step so first was the defining the population then defining the case that was describing the day uh, this is based on time place and person in time we had uh, fluctuation short term periodic fluctuation and uh, long term trends and we had seen epidemics and time place and person so the fourth step is measuring the disease so we need to measure the disease by using any of our tools so tools are like the measurement of epidem epidemiology will be done by epidemiological tools that are rate ratio rate ratio and proportion so we need to understand the amount of disease we need to quantify the amount of disease by using rate ratio and proportion so the tools of epidemiology i will be explaining another class so we need to measure the disease based on this uh, tools of epidemiology so usually uh, we calculate the incidence and prevalence incidence is the new cases and prevalence is the total cases so prevalence means how much percentage of the people are affected by that disease and incidence is how fast it is spreading so in epidemic we need to find out the incidence in a chronic diseases like cancer uh, heart disease we need to find out the prevalence so incidence is very vital in controlling an epidemic so usually incidence can be found out in longitudinal studies prevalence can be found out in cross-sectional study the fifth step is comparing with non entices once you get the data we need to compare with other population where the same problem has happened we need to compare with other population and subgroups of the same population so ultimately we get 
an idea of the disease etiology okay once we get the idea of disease etiology by after comparing this we need to do the hypothesis this is the last step of descriptive epidemiology formulation of hypothesis hypothesis is nothing but a assumption after arrived from the observation after arriving from the collected data so once you collected data you arrive at a formulation of hypothesis so hypothesis is assumption about the particular problem so drinking water from that particular pipe or drinking water from that particular restaurant could be the cause of cholera so you cannot say that it is the cause you should say it could be the cause and in the next study design that is an analytical study we are going to test the hypothesis whether it is true or false and we'll reject the hypothesis that is the second step so we have um, come to the um, steps okay so i'll just recap it the first step was defining the population defining the population we have defined population and the disease operational definition we are given and describing the disease based on time place person and measuring the disease by using um, tools of epidemiology incidence and problems comparing with other groups of same problem and formulation of hypothesis so a little bit uh, tricky part is the operational definition we need to change the clinical definition to operational definition uh, when coming to the third step you have time place and person in time we will be studying more about epidemics that is comes under short term fluctuation so epidemic is a sudden increase in number so common source propagated epidemic and slow epidemic common source has again a different uh, division that is single exposure and continuous exposure single exposure is bhopal gas tragedy continuous exposure is well of contaminated water and propagated epidemics which is person to person transmission and the periodic fluctuation we have seasonal trends and cyclic trends and long term or secular trends is another thing the second part of uh, the third step is place distribution describing the disease under place so there will be various uh, variation international national rural urban and local and the third part of third step that is describing the disease under person based on age sex occupation marital status and etc so the fourth step is measuring the disease based on the tools of epidemiology commonly we use incidence and prevalence and the fifth step is comparing with non entities we should compare it with different population and sub groups and finally we arrive at a hypothesis that is a proposition or a supposition or an assumption about the cause and outcome so this could be the cause for this disease this could be the uh, that cholera could be the due to uh, drinking water from that particular pipe or from a restaurant that is our hypothesis so yesterday we had seen uh, types of epidemiological study just to recap case report case series cross sectional and longitudinal studies so case report just explaining a case whereas uh case series it's like a uh, compilation of case report which has happened at different time and different place and the same problem will be repeatedly uh, mentioned from different parts of the world so that is case series in cross section study the population will be taken only at one point of time so this is a cross section study relationship of stress and dental caries among the students in bangalore city so these students will be asked about stress and their dental caries uh, only one point of time okay so longitudinal studies the same population will be checked at frequent interval of time or there will be a follow up for an example the health complaints after a malodorous chemical explosion a longitudinal study here you can see that the survey for 18 months which was started in 2008 and to 2012 so in cross sectional studies it was uh, just like mm, a study will be done under uh, a study will be uh, done 
either a 2008 or 2012 there will not be any follow up in cross sectional study again you can see that association between periodontal condition and microbiota in women during pregnancy longitudinal study so here also there will be definitely a follow up so in cross sectional study sample will be surveyed only at one point of time whereas in longitudinal study t1 t2 the same sample will be time 1 and time 2 there will be time 3 4 there will be follow up in longitudinal study okay so that's all about descriptive study i have uh, explained in detail about descriptive study so the next class uh, will be uh, dealing with the analytical study okay thank you